Throughout the history of this country, and particularly starting in about the 1840s after the, you know, the earliest waves of immigration started, there's always been the backlash. The other is, uh, is taking our jobs. The other is not America, and the other is, is not a part of white civilization, which was all the, all the rage in those, in those days. Get these people out of here. And it always takes a very populist cast. The 1920s was a time of these weird culture wars. One of them was Prohibition, by the way, which is huge in Kansas. And another was the Klan, which had this enormous revival after World War I, largely thanks to a stupid movie that everybody had seen, where the Klan were the heroes in the movie. The Klan represented a kind of really blunt, ugly, stupid um, pseudo-patriotism. White became concerned about the growing influence of the Klan on both major parties. It was uh, not only uh, a reaction to uh, the traditional Klan hatred of, of African Americans, but was also anti-Jewish and anti-Catholic. And these, of course, were groups that were identified with new immigrants, with radicalism, you know, Bolshevism all of these things that were coming out of, of uh, the First World War. In the spring of 1921, 200 Klegels, recruiters for the Ku Klux Klan, descended on Kansas with the mission to make the state a stronghold for the hate group. In little time, 40,000 Kansans were enrolled in the Invisible Empire. You go back and you look at how they operated in Wichita, in the Ark City area, Winfield, Coffeeville, they were almost like a chamber of commerce, almost like the Kiwanis Club. You know when you drive in a lot of small towns and they have these little signs, the Lions Club, the Kiwanis Club, well, it was like the Klan as well. At one point, the Klan numbered about 6,000 in Wichita. So it was just like uh, maybe your, one of your largest civic organizations in town. It was expensive to join the Klan. It cost about 21 bucks, 21 dollars to join the Klan. Today, that'd be 300 something dollars. He had to pay dues, he had to buy the equipment. It was an expensive prospect. And the guy that sold you the membership, you might say, made money off of it. And so did the guys who ran the Klan. So it was a big money-making organization. White returned from a European trip to find his beloved Emporia had literally been invaded by the KKK. Klansmen ran the police, police department, Klansmen ran the, uh, the city council, and the mayor was the Klans, Klansman. Uh, so Emporia was basically taken over. The first thing the Klan does when it organizes is to try to bribe some preacher by pompously marching up the aisle of his church in their silly nightgowns and giving him $25, a little less than 20 cents apiece for each Klansman. No Emporia preacher should accept a bribe. In Kansas City, Preachers threw back the money when it was presented. The thing to do is to take it and give it to the colored churches or the Knights of Columbus. That would show the Klan about what honest people thought of its cowardly propaganda. The Klan was having a convention in Emporia and wanted to have a parade. And Dad would not issue the parade permit as long as they were wearing their masks and regalia. So they took an appeal to district court, and the judge, I.T. Richardson, was a Klansman, uh, overruled Dad, and the Klan had their parade. They marched four abreast from 5th Street to 12th Street. That's how many there was of them. Bert Rich, an African-American, Longtime resident of Emporia spoke about his memories of White in 1974. They didn't scare me. People told the Ku Klux that I was a contractor for hire here. One evening they came out to my place, there was four of them. They asked if I wanted to contract the grade work on the bridge on the Neosho River. I said, I don't know. I have to go see the bridge. One said, Well, why don't you get in and we'll go look at the bridge? I said, Sure. I'll go get my coat. I'll be right back. I went in the house, then went back outside, hold up my 245s and said, let's go. One of them said, oh, I, I forgot. We have a, a meeting in town to go to. We, we can now. I never heard any more from them.
1924, the governor was up for re-election. Uh, it was an important election because the preceding governor, who was White's friend, Henry Allen, had started criminal proceedings against the Klan. Uh, there is law in Kansas that you have to get a state charter. You can't run a, a sort of in-state corporation without the state charter. So he filed charges for breaking that law. Attorney General Charles Griffith wanted an anti-Klan plank in the platform of the Kansas Republican Party, but was overruled by Ben S. Paulin, who was backed by the KKK and was the Republican nominee for governor. The Democrats also backed the Klan. Governor Jonathan M. Davis was elected with Klan support in 1922. Both parties generally, White believed, were refusing to take on the Klan and the issues that he felt were of concern. This crossed a line for White. He realized the KKK was taking over city and state governments. Indiana and the South were already Klan controlled. Kansas was next in line. He decided to run um, in 1924 as the right-hand candidate for the governorship to make sure that Kansas never became Klansis. That's how he put it. The issue in Kansas this year is the Ku Klux Klan above everything. The Ku Klux Klan is found in every county. It represents a small minority of the citizenship and is organized for the purpose of terror. Its terror is directed at honest, law-abiding citizens, Negroes, Jews, and Catholics. These groups in Kansas comprise more than one-fourth of our population. They're entitled to their full constitutional rights, their rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yet, because of their skin, their race, or their creed, the Ku Klux Klan in Kansas is subjecting them to economic boycott, to social ostracism, to every form of harassment, annoyance, and every terror that a bigoted minority can use. Kansas, with her intelligence and pure American blood, of all states, should be free of this taint. I was born in Kansas and lived my life in Kansas. I'm proud of my state. And the thought that Kansas should be a government beholden to this hooded gang of mass fanatics, ignorant and tyrannical in their ruthless oppression, is what calls me out of the pleasant ways of my life and into this disgraceful but necessary task. He had taken a lifelong sort of vow against running for office himself. He felt that this sort of undermined his status as a, as a journalist because you, know, you could always say, well, you're, you're trying to grind your own axe. And he didn't even declare until September. And so he ran for like three months. His son drove him all over Kansas. He gave speeches. And then the night of the election, he went to bed happy, knowing he would probably lose. But he did make a statement. Reverend William Woodward, the Georgia-based spokesman for the KKK, was concerned about White's candidacy. If White, Ryan, and Griffith are successful in November, the Kansas Klan never will get a charter if these men get into office. There were a lot of Kansans who wanted somebody that they could vote for or who wasn't you know, allied with this fascist organization, the Klans. Charles H. McBrayer, Kansas Grand Dragon, urged Kansas Klansmen to stand firm and fight to the last breath and last drop of blood. White received 150,000 votes out of 600,000 cast. Paulin may have won, but White proved the Klan in Kansas was now a liability and not an asset. Uh, his campaign was successful in that regard and that it showed politicians uh, that they didn't have to join the Klan, they didn't have to, show, they didn't have to side with the Klan if they, they wanted to win lots of votes. They, they, it was possible to sort of short circuit the Klan structure. William Hunt White, uh, his constant drumbeat against the Klan in, in his campaign and then in his editorials uh, was no doubt very influential in that. Dr. Hiram Evans, the imperial wizard of the Kluxers, is bringing his consecrated shirt tail to Kansas this spring. And from gloomy claverns, we'll make five Kansas speeches. We welcome him. Enter the wizard. Sound the bull roars and the he -gaws. Beat the tom-toms. He will see what was once a thriving and profitable hate factory and bigatorium now laughed into a busted community where the cockeyed he-dragon wails for his firstborn and the nightshirts of a once salubrious pageantry sag in the spring breezes and bag at the wobbly knees. The Kluxers in Kansas are as dejected and sad as last year's bird's nest, afflicted with general debility, dizziness on going upstairs, 
and general aversion to female society. When William Allen White ran the Klan out of Kansas, this is one of the you know great sort of achievements of his life, I think. And White said, you know, no, this is a repugnant, loathsome, you know, phenomenon, and we've got to fight it with everything we have, and he did, and he succeeded, and that's a, you know an enormous accomplishment.